All right, guys. So around this time last year, actually around September last year, I entered my doctorate in Chinese medicine. So I jumped right from working a full-time job, or at that time I'd gone into my business full-time, and now into full-time medical school while running a business. And the reason for me continuing to do both is because I already had a business and I wanted to graduate as close to debt-free as possible. So I came in gung-ho, guns blazing, saying that I was going to pay off all my debt, and the very first year managed to burn myself out and have a lot of health issues from overwork and just from stress. And so this 100-day manifestation experiment was to see if I could bring back that excitement that I used to have as well as still get even better results. What's up guys, Alex Hine here, author of the book Master of the Day. So I talked to a friend around this time when I was trying to figure out, you know, what do I do next? Do I start a new business? Do I just kind of run the current one, kind of half-half, not really that excited? And what she said to me was, just for 100 days, try only doing the things that excited you. And I want to focus on the four things I did and the four things I asked for that ended up happening so that you can get started with your own experiment on how your thoughts create your reality and you can decide for yourself. Because for me, I was very skeptical. I mean, I'm open to this kind of stuff, but the thing is, like, what got me to where I am in my life today was work. Like, I know how to work. I published already four books. I wrote my, my last full-length book while I was in medical school here and then published it in the summer. Like, I know how to work, but just because you know how to work and you get results doesn't mean you enjoy it or that you're happy or that you can feel like you can do that forever. And I want to be working for the next 70 years. So I started with four things. So the very first thing was I would ask for whatever it is I wanted. Asking for me was a formal, I wrote it down on paper, please help me with this, find this, do this. I did it in the morning and I did it in the evening. The second thing was I kept a little journal to keep track of my intuitions. And the way I knew something was intuition was, number one, I felt excited by it. And number two, I felt it kind of in my stomach, like, ooh, that's a good idea. Not like up here, like, yeah, I should do that, I should do that. It was, it just popped into my head and I was like, ooh, that would be cool. That's the way I knew that something was intuition. And I tracked these little intuitions because they were very easy to miss. And I put them into a little journal, the one I've shared in a previous video, and I just would track, these are all the intuitions, these are the things I need to act on. The third thing I did was I surrendered. Any negative emotion, stress, fear, anxiety, comparison, issues with self-worth, I surrendered. Meaning, I would say in my head, I surrender. I let go. I'm, I'm so agitated because I'm going to fail this exam. Okay. Maybe I will. That's it. Surrender. Let go. I don't know what's going to happen. What if my business fails because I can't perform in medical school and in my business? Okay. It could happen. Surrender. Let it go. What if this girl says that? That person says that? Surrender. Let it go. That was the third thing I did. So internally, I was clear, 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 clear of any negative emotions day to day. And then the last thing was that I only did the things in my business and as best I could in my life that excited me. That's it. The way you determine excitement was in my body. That's how I determined if it was exciting. Not, I should do this. It was, yeah, let's do it. All right? Everyone knows the feeling of excitement. Now, I wanted to do this not only to feel better, to feel more excited about my life, but also I wanted to see if I could get better results in my business and feel excited. So I wrote down four goals. Four things that I was working on coming true. The first thing was that I wanted to make an extra thousand a month in my business to really provide more financial security and to pay off my medical debt. I wanted to start on Instagram, even though I was really resistant and didn't really like it. I wanted a strategy that did not take a lot of time that I enjoyed that was basically not me doing more work. I wanted to get set up to do a TED Talk and I wanted to come out with a Master of the Day journal. All right, so the first thing was that as a business owner, the first thing I have to focus on is money. I don't like that fact. I don't want to focus on the only the things I make money. I just want to write books and shoot videos. But the reality is those things don't make money by themselves. I have to study business. And so I thought every night, every morning, I would say, please help me make this without doing extra work, without working twice as hard, without doing something I hated. I want it to be easy 
and fun and exciting. So one of the things I was pondering was with my content on YouTube here, you know, most of my top content is personal development, but my brand, modernhealthmonk.com, is about really about fitness and weight loss. That's where all my courses are related to in my coaching. So it felt like a mismatch. But what excited me the most is the personal development content. So I said, you know what? Fine. I'm just going to create the content I like, that you guys like, the personal development stuff, for 100 days and see what happens. Well, the very first video I shot was super off-brand, and it was all about how to journal to be more successful, right? The journaling exercise that can change your life. Now, (laughs) would you believe that very first video I shot, off-brand, whatever excited me, that video went viral. And it pulled up so many other videos, and I want you to look at my AdSense check here for the month, and what it's been for several months now. And isn't that interesting that the very first thing I asked for was an extra 1000 a month in income? Now, that's kind of crazy, right? And that's kind of humbling. And it made me just think, how? <laughs> like, how? I don't, I don't really know. I asked, I listened, and then I did. And that's what I think you're going to learn that I learned is the key thing. When you ask, an answer comes. The listening is the little intuition that's very easy to ignore but then you have to do it. So the second thing is that I've been wanting to start using Instagram. And the reason why I haven't been using it in my business is I hate social media. I hate what it does to people. I hate when you start uploading, it changes the way and the kind of content you upload. And so I was afraid that would happen to me, but I was kind of struck with the fact that I got these really meaningful messages, these really interesting direct messages on Instagram from you guys. And I thought that was really rewarding and really humbling. And so I wanted to figure out a way where I could start uploading content and build that platform over the next years, but without doing extra work, because I wrecked my health the first year of medical school from overwork, from stress. And so I asked what I should do. And around that time, someone just mentioned to me, you know, what if you just did like personal brandy type pictures or little design cards? So I put out this ad on Craigslist looking for a photographer, and I mentioned that I was looking for people to do a shoot or potentially do some kind of long-term deal where I can give them exposure. What happened was a bunch of people responded, but the last person that responded just so happened, I put a Craigslist ad, remember that, just so happened to be a girl at my school who is now working with me to produce a lot of photography, a lot of the videos, and a lot of this other stuff. And that came out of nowhere. Like when you think about the chances of finding someone in a school of what, less than a thousand people, and you put a random Craigslist ad, it's kind of crazy. And so sure enough, we found a strategy that could work for uploading daily to Instagram that doesn't take a lot of time on my end and can still be impactful and still help a lot of people. The third thing I asked for is just some help on getting this Master of the Day journal created. The thing is, like, I have to go through China to get a supplier and then get a distributor and have them do all this stuff and there's the potential to lose a lot of money that I don't have to create a print journal. And I know journals are really popular now, and the one I want to create is very different in a very simple way. And so I've been working on creating it because I've used these exercises in my own life, and I know it'll help many of you. But I was getting caught up in all the barriers of, I need to put money up front, I need to deal with the Chinese, I need to go through Alibaba.com, I need to deal, it's very complicated, and it's a long process. It's like one to two years from idea to inception. And One day, when I was asking for an easier way, a faster way to figure out how to do this, I got an email from Alibaba.com, which is a Chinese, it helps you connect with manufacturers, and I must have signed up and forgotten about it, because I got this email, you know, and it said to me, here are our best-selling hardcover journals, and I clicked that, and I set up a quote pretty effortlessly inside their system. So I went from being like, all right, how do I do this journal, do I create a journal, So the question was, do I create a journal? That very first video on journaling went viral. That was a yes. And then it was, how can I do this faster? In my inbox comes the Alibaba email. And the last thing was, I want to give a TED Talk. I'm not really super concerned with the time, whether it's now or in two years or five years. But one of the most common comments I get from you is, when are you giving a TED Talk? And, you know, part of it is what's massively on my plate right now. But it's also like, when is it? When do I have to coordinate? I have to coordinate three to six months to prepare. And so I mentioned it to that photographer that I mentioned. And she said, oh, you mentioned TED, right? Well, they're actually here next week in Portland taking their applications. So TED was actually locally in Portland 
doing their drop boxes for people to apply to speak. And so I was like, okay, okay, it's kind of short notice. Next week is my finals week. I don't have two weeks to do a talk. That's going to be on TED, possibly. And also my finals. Not enough time. The next day, I'm working in a coffee shop. I come home. I'm driving on my regular route to home. There's a humongous billboard. It says, like, come speak at TED. (laughs) April, whatever. And I just started laughing because I've been here already. And I haven't, I've been here for almost two years. I haven't seen that. I didn't see that last year. And so it's interesting. When you ask, you begin to see things aligned with whatever it is you're trying to have come to reality. So I think there's one final lesson here. And the final lesson is that doing this experiment and doing especially that quote spiritual exercise of not resisting, accepting everything, especially the things I don't like, and then still acting on improving them, has produced so much calm, so little stress, that I've never had anything like that. Certainly not in the last seven years, for sure. So if there's anything I would recommend, it would be to do those four things I mentioned. Ask, the intuitive journal, to follow your excitement, don't resist. But really, don't resist. Because if you're not at your goals yet, there's going to be frustration and pain and discomfort. And if you do those things that are exciting you, it won't matter when you arrive because you're already having so much fun in the process. It, It won't even matter. It won't even matter. And that was a huge revelation for me. Listen, the intuition will be small. It'll be a little thing that's easy to ignore. And then you have to act on whatever's exciting you. And then don't resist if it hasn't happened yet or you're just wondering if it's going to happen. Just let it happen. So I hope that helps you guys. That was kind of an interesting 100-day experiment I did that I hoped would serve me for the rest of my life. And thus far, it certainly has. So I'm making sure to do a lot of interesting documentation on what I did, what I would do differently, and how it impacted my life. Now, before you go, I want you to leave a comment there below. Let me know for you what would be the coolest thing you could manifest and be unrealistic. And I'm not saying like, oh, a billion dollars, unless you think that's what you really want. But like, what do you really want? Tell me there below. Now, the best way to stay in touch is to come get my free personal development and weight loss challenge at modernhealthmonk.com forward slash YouTube. You can also see my latest two videos and related videos right here and right here. And otherwise, I will catch you guys soon.